Shalom, shalom. In today's video, man, I'm truly going to try to help, you know, a small portion of women out that can receive wisdom. You know, it doesn't matter if you are young, middle age or old. I am going to help you out and tell you some things you can do and to be able to spot out in your mindset that one, if you are willing to make the change will help you out and you won't find yourself like a lot of these women out here. You know, if you choose not to take wisdom, then don't be surprised if you're sitting up here wrecking your brain not using logic, wondering why a man doesn't want you. Man, this stuff is not hard. I want you to understand that, man, there is plenty of physically attractive women walking around. But we are experiencing a time where men are saying, you are attractive, but I'm not interested. When a man says you are attracted, when a man says you are attractive, but he's not interested, that's letting you know something about your mental or your spirit is not right. Okay, man, I am a married man, married to a black woman, have three beautiful, awesome kids. I love my family. It is painful to see some of these women way older than myself out here struggling because they choose to reject wisdom and logic. Let me say this. This is not a, a, a roast video of women. This is not a, 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 a cook you session. It's not one of those. I'm going to roll the tapes and show you how some of these women think. And if you are a woman that claims to have faith in the Most High Yah, you know, it is very important for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, or the Ruach HaKodesh. It's very important because it is a spirit that gives understanding. You know, and nobody talks about how this delusion is truly a mental health issue amongst a lot of these single women and this stuff is gonna backfire on you man i'm hoping a woman out there will watch some of this footage and some of the commentary that i give and will take the wisdom not just coming from me but the wisdom coming from the bible that you possibly say you've read man let's roll that footage 53 and I just can't believe that I'm sitting here and it has been several years I, I think it was over a year that I had a date and then it's been several years since then where are all the good men I'm tired of being alone I want to share my life with someone I am just freaking tired I want to be in love. I want to share my life with someone. I want to feel the joys. I want to feel have my hands held. I want to be held. I want to kiss. I want to support. I want to make coffee with that person. I want, I want my person. I want my person. Why is it so hard to find your person? I'm tired. I'm 53. Happen to me. All right, let me stop right there. Now, first and foremost, that wasn't a a, a bad looking older woman, wasn't it? Let me go back. That wasn't a bad looking uh, older woman. OK. I'm going to give you the will of the most high. Yah, and I'm going to give you some statistics to show you why this woman can't fathom why the all the men that she thinks you know where all these good men it's not like good men is out under a rock hiding there is some statistical 
there's some 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 logic that has to be applied you know and i tell you this man there is a woman by the name of the crimson cure shout out to the crimson cure this woman is a widow i don't think she's in her 50s but she's a widow and she you know recently got remarried and you can see why you know, for a middle-aged black woman, she was able to get married so fast. But you have to look at, you know, how well she can articulate and try to counsel women on the duties uh, of being a good wife, a biblical wife. You know, a help me to your man. It's easy for the very submissive, modest, and meek women to get married. It's easy for them. Okay? Like I said, this is not a bad looking woman. She's 53 years old. I don't know what her dating history is. We don't have nothing else to go on to say whether she she was married or anything like that. But one thing I do know, if a woman is a widow and was a good wife, if she has those wife qualities, it's not hard for her to find her footing again because she truly has what men desire. Let me give you some uh, let me give you let me give you this Bible verse. First Timothy chapter five, verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give no occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So the, the so the most high gives us an order and it's for the younger women to marry. OK, second order of business, bear children. Third order of business, guide the house. OK, when you do these things out of order don't be surprised if you've given the adversary every occasion to to speak reproachfully against you to put the blame on you because you was out of order okay man you got to think a man naturally wants to spread uh his seed amongst a woman that is youthful her soil is still fertile there's men flocking flocking to do that i'm not saying as a woman you should entertain all of them because some of these men just want to plant seeds and don't want to actually water it and take care of it okay listen to these statistics one out of five women will marry in their early 20s that's the equivalent of 20 percent so in your 20s as a woman you have a 20 percent chance of marrying Let's keep going. Now, in your 50s, listen to this. One out of 16 women will marry in their 50s. That's a 6.25% chance of marrying in your 50s. To answer your question, it's your chances have gone down statistically. You got to understand a lot of men through that age range, 20, 30, 40s, 50s, have already gotten married. When you wait as a woman to get married when you are older in age or when you are where you want to be in life, you know, successful as you want to be, you are at the back of the line in marriage. And oftentimes you don't possess those you know, wifely traits and attributes in the character and men can discern this is a woman that's prioritized marriage last. And for that reason, it's based upon sound judgment and logic that if a man takes you on, you are going to put everything else before him and him dead last. OK, let's keep going. When we look at the statistics, this is very important. 37% of women in their early to mid 20s are single mothers. Listen to this. So you got more women in their 20s having babies than you do getting married. And that's why I gave you 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. The first order of business was younger women to marry, then bear children, then guide the house, take care of the house. 
See, the modern society, you know, has programmed women to be so outside of the house and the house is falling. When you look at the Proverbs 31, the bulk of what she was doing, 85, 90 percent of the time was guiding her house as a woman. OK, let's keep going. A 53. What happened to men not being afraid to come and talk to you in person? Like, I feel like I run into men all the time. Listen to this. Listen to it. Pay attention. I'm who will, like, say something to their homeboy or, like, say something, a compliment loud enough for me to hear. Not directly speaking to me, but just so I can hear it so I can say thank you. And that's, like, their way of knowing if they can come and talk to me or not. And I remember when I was younger, like... Keep in mind, this woman through her vanity might look young to you but that's a that's makeup that's enhancements keep in mind she said when i was younger let's keep going i could be in a group of 20 girls and the guy would not care he would come part the red sea and come get my number like what 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 happened to that where did that get lost Okay, let me back up. Let me back up. We're going to get to old Tracy Ellis. Okay. She said, when I was younger, a guy would approach me even if I'm with a group of women and would part the Red Sea. I want you to understand this, women. The amount of attention you get in your 20s is not going to be the same in your 30s. The attention you get in your 30s is not going to be the same you get in your 40s. The attention you get in your 40s is not going to be the attention that you will get in your 50s. There's oftentimes a saying, and this is a very wise saying, the grass is not always greener on the other side, okay? If you don't believe what I'm saying, as a woman, I want you to go over to a YouTube channel called HL, the letter HL, and then type out, talk that thought, like thought in the mind. HL, talk that thought. Over there, you will see you know, hundreds of videos of women that jumped ship in marriage after 10 years thought that the grass was greener and then they realized the very thing that I'm saying. Man, before I got married, I was in my 20s and, you know, it was nothing for, for five, five to 10 men to hit on me in a week. And, and, now, 10 years later, in my 30s and my 40s, I, can, I can't even get a guy to, to, to smile at me. I'm, I'm trying to give you the answers to the test early on. This is the same kind of wisdom that I would give my daughter straight from the Bible, straight from the book, straight from the statistics. As a woman, the worst thing you can do for yourself is to think that you are the exception. One thing that you find in common with a lot of these single women is when it comes to the statistics, when it comes to the, 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 the passages of, of Bible verses and scripture, all of these single women that's out there struggling to find love think they are the exception. And I told you, a man will tell you Man, you, you're, you're a very attractive woman, but I'm not interested. And a man will say he's not interested by not offering you the opportunity to be a wife, not elevating your status from being a single woman to a married woman, a covered woman. OK, so think about that, you know. Your 20s and 30s and 40s is going to look a lot different, you know, in your 20s, you don't even have to be dolled up. Men are telling you they don't even prefer that. In your 20s, you can have your hair standing all up on your head looking crazy. And these younger men, natural instinct, are gravitated to approach you. 
You see what I'm saying? We live in a daytime and hour where we got a lot of women that's grandmother age. We got women that's in their 40s and in their 50s as grandmothers. But they think that because they're all dolled up, that's going to get them the same amount of attention. And men is like, men is not approaching uh, older women no more. Men is not approaching older women like that. A lot of these, these women, you got to think that woman's 55. This woman is probably... I would say middle 30s, middle 30s, early 40s. It's very hard to tell with the deception of makeup. But a lot of these women have grown kids. These kids is old enough to have kids. How many, how many men do you think is rolling up on grandma? Listen to what I'm saying. It's not a, it's not a plus for you as a woman for you to be single your whole life have kids, you know, outside of marriage, and then you say, well, I'm a better candidate because my kids is grown outside the house. That doesn't get you any extra points, okay? Let's let's go to old uh, Tracy Ellis Ross. Now, I want you to understand, when Tracy Ellis Ross, who is now 51 years old, this is a picture she posted and people did all kind of video reactions to it. When Tracy Ellis Ross was younger, she had a lot of options. She was getting a lot of attention. Tracy Ellis Ross is not a bad looking woman, has never been a bad looking woman. But here you go. See, when she's younger, she didn't have to post nothing like this. Men was naturally, instinctively attracted to the youth. Now Tracy Ellis Ellis cracks 51 years old and she she posted this mess uh within the last 6 months. So now since I'm not getting as much attention as I used to without having to do this, now I'm gonna just post thirst traps and let all the thirsty men come and orbit around me. See Women need to understand all attention is not good attention. All attention is not good attention. You got to see, based off this photo and some of the comments that people were saying, she got a lot of attention, but guess what? You still didn't get an opportunity. You still didn't get an opportunity for marriage. And you got to think. You know, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on. As a woman, you have to have patience. Oftentimes, a lot of a lot of these single women that's out here struggling to find love, they got more patience in all other aspects of life. But one area they lack patience in is relationship. And let me tell you why as a woman, you need patience. You have women out here that's 22 years old thinking a 22-year-old man, every 22-year-old man they come across uh, is supposed to be making $100,000. And this is what you do. Rather than having patience, you jump over here to the man that's got a little bit more money throwing that money at you. Then what happens, you didn't wasted your time uh, with these men that really don't want you for a wife but just want you for a body running your body count up and then when you get to your 30s now that man that was making only forty thousand dollars when he was 22 he's looking a lot better when you scroll on his his profile he didn't leveled up on you you looking at a man okay this man in bought a house you know got a car got his stuff together you know he's making money but guess what He's not checking for you anymore based upon how you treated him when he was younger. This is why patience is very important. See, you got a lot of, uh, I, I talked about this with the athletes. You had a lot of black women mad at these white women when the black women had an opportunity at these athletes early on. But what happened? You jumped ship. Instead of sticking with this dude that had to make the grades get out there and, and, and put all put his all into his opportunity you chose the guy that could, could take you 
you know, uh, to five-star restaurants, but he never married you. And now when you're sitting up watching, uh, you know, the NFL draft, now you got to shame this man because he chose a woman that chose him and had patience. Patience is very important, okay? This is Tracy Ellis Ross, and this is this is a shame. Tracy Ellis Ross, uh, I don't know if she has kids. I don't think she has kids. I'm not sure on that, but this woman old enough to be somebody's grandma, and this is what you're doing on your social media. That right there lets a good man know, you know what? I'm good. There's other way. You could put on a nice dress that's covered and show that you got a body. But you wanted to just go the extra distance. Get all these extra thirsty men gravitating towards you. And a good man that might have. Now you see this picture on the left where she's covered. A good man will give that version of Tracy Ellis Ross more play than this one right here. Where she didn't uploaded it for the world to see. You see what I'm saying? And it's the same outfit. But this is showing you that this is a 51-year-old immodest woman. Look at look at the stuff that she puts out there. She the one holding the phone, taking a picture. She the one uploaded this to her social media. The guy that would have gave you an opportunity sees you doing this and is like, you know what? You attractive, but I'm not interested. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Try to break this thing down for you. I think that once she. All right. Now listen to this. This woman is gonna say something, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna address it. it. To a certain age, and you have a certain amount of degrees or um, titles, that it becomes you become intimidating to men. Why are men? Okay. You heard what she said. She says, when you have a certain amount of titles or degrees, men are intimidated, uh, you know, by the educated women. And I'm going to break this down. The problem with educated women, and I'm going to tie this to statistics also, is you think as a woman, your education, you know, shifts the power balance in the relationship and you think you can gain more control over the man as if degrees change the biblical order in marriage. And the Bible says, you know, a woman shall have no authority over man. But with that education, you get, uh, you know, too prideful in your education. And you start telling the man that he's stupid and you don't know nothing. And what, what you do is you undermine his leadership you know, where a man has logic naturally. That's why the woman is the weaker vessel biblically, because she doesn't think according to logic. First and primary as a source of reasoning, she uses emotion. That's why a woman, when she explains something, she's going to say, well, the way I feel about it. And she's going to take a stance very strongly in her feelings. A man is going to come uh, from logic and reasoning, from facts. So you start to think that you can shift the power dynamic. Okay, I got two degrees. This man ain't about to tell me nothing. Let's keep going. I want you to be mindful. Based upon the statistics that I gave you, one out of five women will marry in their early 20s. That's 20%. One out of 16 women will marry in their 50s. That's 6.25%. 37% of women in their early to mid 20s are single mothers. Let's look at this. I'm going to say something. Some women leave college with a husband. Others leave college with a baby. Listen to what I'm saying. Some women leave college with a husband. Some women leave college with a baby. There's two different paths that those women will take. You got some women that leave college with a doggone uh, diploma. There's nothing wrong with a woman being educated. There's nothing wrong with it. But as a woman, when you start to think that, oh, okay, I got a degree 
and what's in the Bible for the role of a wife don't apply to me, that's when you find yourself by yourself. That's when you find yourself single as a woman. That's when it happens. You know, you have you have women out there that have have acknowledged via on YouTube by a lot of videos. I wish I would have prioritized family. I wish I would have prioritized, you know, marriage. The men, the, the, the good men that I have experienced, I wish I would have prioritized them rather than moving across the country for a job opportunity. Now I'm sitting in this nice house all by myself. You got to understand a good man is not about to just move in and live with a woman because we know the power dynamic is off in that. That's why when a man move in with a woman, when she when her patience is worn thin and her emotions have changed, she'll say, you got to get your and get up out of here. A man is not put, a good man is not putting himself into that dynamic. And a lot of these older, educated women are set in their ways and they have too much baggage in their success. Listen to what I'm saying. A lot of your success comes with a lot of baggage. I could do a whole nother hour long video talking about uh, the student loan debt that a lot of these educated women have, but hold as a title of honor. Oh, I'm an educated woman. Got to look at that debt. You know, a lot of this stuff, you know, you, you, you got uh, real estate and it's not up to par. You know, stuff has to in, in order for uh, a man to invest in you and make make you a wife. There's got to be so much liquidation uh, that would happen. And oftentimes you're not willing to make some of these adjustments to be selected. Whereas let me break it down. Statistically. Uh, a woman working at Piggly Wiggly, still at home, living with her parents, don't have no education other than a high school diploma or a GED, has a better chance at getting married than these educated women. And statistically shows they will last longer in marriage. OK. If a man can use logic to see that less educated women last longer in marriage why would anyone in their right mind marry a woman who is more likely to divorce him? Let's look at the statistics. It's about 48% of marriages end in divorce. Out of that, 70% of those divorces are filed by women. When a woman is college educated, that statistic jumps up to 91%. The more degrees you got, the higher it goes. Why would a man take a high risk investment knowing that he faces a higher chance of, of losing out versus having an option over here to where it's not as risky? It, it, you got to think, ask yourself, this is a woman. And this is what the statistics are. Would you would you rather get with the man that has a 70 percent chance of being a good husband? Or a 90% chance of being a good husband? Would you rather get with the man that, uh, you know, has a 70% chance of walking off his job and leaving, leaving the family stranded? Or a 90% chance? You'd be a fool to take the higher risk option. Okay? Let's keep going. Intimidating to men. Why are men terrified of independent women who know what they? And I'm not asking for the, well, a real man wouldn't be terrified, because that doesn't answer my question. Why are men terrified of an independent woman who knows what she wants? I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a great quality to have. All right. Now, this one, this is why I tell you. Women, you need to listen to what I'm saying. If you are out here saying you are an independent woman, don't be upset or mad when men allow you to stay independent. Let me say that again. 
if you are out here saying you are an independent woman, this woman says she don't understand why men are intimidated by independent women. Let me break this down for you. Men is not intimidated by independent women. We just know to leave you alone and let you be independent. Come on, this this is this is simple. Okay? And and this is why I say there's only going to be a small portion of women that watch this and will take my advice. I cannot give you no greater advice as a woman to get filled with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. I cannot stress it enough. It is a spirit that will give you understanding and your flesh alone will not comprehend what I'm saying. This is why we got a lot of educated women that don't understand the, the, the biblical wisdom and logic I'm coming in. They don't have a spirit of understanding. They got a spirit in them that's of, of confusion, of delusion. So let's break this down. She said, why, why are men intimidated? This dog gonna fly. Why are men intimidated? She said, why are men intimidated by independent women? Let's look at the definition, okay? A lot of these women want to hold on to their independence as a badge of honor while expecting a high earning man or a good man to pay their way. These independent women will say, well, if we get married, I want to hold on to my independence, but I don't want to pay no bills. I want the man to pay it all. And then you start getting, well, a good man will be a provider. Well, a good man also is not looking for an independent woman. Why do I say that? First Corinthians 11, 11. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. One thing you don't hear successful men or good men say is I'm an independent man. It is it is given that a man has to be uh, a certain level of strength, you know, has to possess certain leadership traits in order to be able to take on a woman and and lead a family. You don't hear men out here saying I'm a there wasn't no song. You got to think women have been corrupted by this stuff. Beyonce, who I think with Beyonce came out with this independent ladies, you know, this music independent. Lil Boosie had a, a Lil Boosie and Webby had a song independent. Ain't neither one of them jokers married. They ain't never been married. But these are the people that you follow. Okay? Independent. Adjective. Not depending on another for livelihood or substance. See, it would, it would, it would piss me off for a woman to tell me she's independent. Asking why I don't want nothing to do with her. That would, I'd be like, you got to get away from me because you bipolar. Logically, you don't even understand the words you're using. Independent, adjective, not depending on another for livelihood or substance. So let me tell you this, as an, as a, if you claim to be an independent woman and you want a man to pay all the bills or majority of the bills, you're no longer independent. You are depending on somebody else for your livelihood or your substance. Biblically, there's nothing wrong with depending on a man. There's nothing wrong with it. A man biblically is supposed to be a provider. The word says a man that does not take care of his own family, provide for his own family, especially his relatives, is worse than an infidel and has denied the faith. See, leave this independent stuff alone as a woman and focus on being interdependent interdependent okay adjective of two or more people or things dependent on each other as a husband as a happily married man i depend on my wife to fulfill her wifely duties my wife depends on me to fulfill my husbandly duties we not just two independent people together no you got to understand being interdependent means if you are married you got somebody there when you get old and you, it, your health starts plummeting you got somebody there that you can depend on all of these independent women is not gonna have nobody to depend on you're gonna be begging your kids to stop what they doing uh and, and taking care of their family to come wipe your butt 
because you didn't want to be interdependent when it mattered. And I'm telling you, it is going to be sad. Just like these women is on here, got a sob story and, and, and crying and don't know why. You're going to be asking, well, how come my kids don't want to take? It's not their responsibility. It's not their responsibility. Biblically, you was the will of the most high. Y'all was to marry young. Was to marry young. To be interdependent. You see what I'm saying? If a man is providing, when you go to the you go to the grocery store and he he's swiping and y'all got food in the house, you're you're he's dependent on you to cook that food. You gotta understand, he's depending on you to fulfill your biblical roles as a woman. See, women don't have no problem uh holding a man accountable to biblical standards. But this is where I said. When you think you are the exception as a woman, it's always going to backfire on you. As a woman, you are the help meet. The help meet. You know what I mean? Help the man meet his mission in life. That's your goal. To build his house. When I say build a house, I'm not talking about a structure. I'm talking about a family. Okay? Let's keep going. Delusional. This is, I'm going to go through some stuff that I'm going to go through some words, and this is why a lot of women are struggling today. And when I say delusional, I'm going to give you some biblical uh, context to show you where delusion came from. Delusional, adjective, characterized by holding false beliefs or judgment about external reality that are held despite incontrovertible evidence to the contrary, typically as a symptom of a mental condition. So... When we see all of these women showing signs of delusion, that's a mental condition. Beneath that mental condition, there's a spiritual condition that needs to be addressed. And this is why I say a lot of women need to repent and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12 and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. As a woman, if you want to be saved, you are going to have to receive, acknowledge, and accept truth. Verse 11, and for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a bunch of delusional women that believe lies. It's not backed up by facts, you know, by statistics. And if this stuff was actually true, a lot of these women wouldn't be on the Internet talking about why this and why that. And I feel like they would be thriving in marriage if what they believed was working. Verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So it says, for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion. Because you don't love the truth, as a woman, Most High is going to send you a strong delusion, and you're going to continue to believe lies. Let's keep going. Another reason why a lot of these older women are not getting selected for marriage is because they are contentious, contentious, adjective, causing or likely to cause an argument controversial. You know, rather than having a modest and meek spirit, which in the eyes of the Most High Yah is a very precious thing. A lot of women have a contentious spirit. Argumentative spirit, you know, I'm not just going to submit to the will of the man. I'm going to try to argue him to submit to me. I'm going to try to get the last word in. That's not a submissive, modest and meek woman. That's not a woman with a quiet spirit. That's a woman that likes to pop off. Men are not dealing with that. Let's keep going. Impatient, adjective. Having or showing a tendency to be quickly irritated or provoked, restlessly eager. You got to understand uh, the Most High says uh, inheritance is 
comes from the father, but a prudent wife from the Lord. When you look at the word prudent, man, you're talking about a woman that thinks about the future. And when you think about the future as a woman, when I said, OK, you can't expect as a as a 22 year old woman or a 20 year old woman for a man uh, to be making one hundred thousand dollars. But when a man has ambitions and you see a man walking in his ambition and his goals, you have to realize it takes patience. If you jump ship thinking the grass is greener and waste 10 years of your life with a man that don't have no ambitions, but it's got money. That man puts all kind of babies up in you. Don't never marry you. Don't want to take care of his kids. That's your problem. All it would have taken is patience. There's men out there right now where a lot of these women won't give a time of day because their expectations are unrealistic for where these men are in their life. You got to think. When you are. 35 as a woman and you say I'm successful, you don't even realize how many good men that you said no to. Now meet your qualifications, but how you treated them, how you undermined them, how you uh, emasculated them. They don't want nothing to do with you. And if you haven't repented, repenting means to change your ways and you try to spin the block. They going to see you still got the same mindset. You might got more education, more titles, but you got the same reprobate mindset as a woman a lot of women are impatient restlessly eager when you gonna do it nagging when you no, no, no. you need to do that i'm leaving you don't make enough money not realizing when you out like this woman right here the men that you said wasn't no good and didn't make enough to to provide for you when that man is in his 30s and you scrolling his social media, you looking at his Facebook and you see his family and that house and they living a nice life. And, you know, now you're like, dang, bro. And we're seeing a lot of women live in regret. Women are coming out saying, man, we got rid of good men. As a woman, man, you're not going to get men out here. Let me tell you. As a man, you have a better opportunity because you control marriage to find a good woman. But as a woman, you might get one good, one or two good men in your life that actually will want to marry you and do right by you. You know, be cautious as a woman when a man, you know, truly shows interest in you and truly is asking to marry you. Be cautious. Of saying no, thinking the grass is greener, thinking you got more options than you do. All options are not a good option. All investments are not a good investment. Because guess what? You said no to him. He going to take his option and shop it around elsewhere and give it to somebody else. And one day, listen to what I'm saying. You are going to have to eat that egg on your face. When you scroll his social media and see that this man has got a beautiful woman, he's commending his family, you know, very, very happy with his wife, very pleased. And now you look back single and lonely in your 30s, 40s and 50s. You jump ship. OK, the next one is stubborn, adjective, having or showing dodge determination not to change one's attitude or position on something. You cannot repent and be stubborn. Those two are contrary to one another. Immodest, adjective, lacking humility or decency. I showed you the picture of, of Tracy Ellis. You are looking at an immodest woman. What man wants a wife that's going to sit up and post dang near naked videos, thirst traps. What man wants a woman like that? That's not decent. That's not uh, modest. 
That's not a woman that shows that she respects herself. And then when you look at it, you got to look at the dating history and the decisions she's made all the way up until that point. Man, it, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I make videos on this so women can take, you know, the nuggets out of this. Take the wisdom out of it. I gave you book, chapter, verse. I gave you statistics. You'd be a fool as a woman to not take my advice and I'm a happily married man. You would be a fool. And furthermore, you would be an absolute fool to go against the will of the Most High Yah. And I'll tell you this. If you're somebody that says, hey, you know, forget what that dude's talking about. That ain't, I ain't that don't apply to me and this and that. Let me know how that works out for you in the next five to ten years. And let's, let's, you know, let's, let's gauge it off of that. If you're trying what you want and you get what you want, I'm happy for you. But if it backfires on you, the word of the most high, y'all does say, fools despise wisdom. Man, I hope I've said something today to educate, to give wisdom, to coach and mentor the women that truly have a spirit to want to learn what they can do to be more favorably seen in the eyes of good men. I hope I've helped you out in that. Closer to y'all ministries, kicking it gun, barrel straight.